हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड इवनिंग आई एम डॉक्टर अवनीश गोयल अ सीनियर कंसल्टेंट डर्मेटोलॉजिस्ट एंड एस्थेटिक लेजर सर्जन आई हैव पोस्ट एमडी क्लिनिकल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ओवर 15 इयर्स आई एम एजुकेटर इन डर्मेटोलॉजी सेक्सुअली ट्रांसमिटेड डिजीजेस लेजर्स एंड एस्थेटिक प्रोसीजर्स विद मोर देन 25 पब्लिकेशंस इन माय नेम आई हैव वास्ट क्लिनिकल एक्सपीरियंस यू कैन कनेक्ट टू मी ऑन माय टेलीग्राम ग्रुप द नेम ऑफ द ग्रुप इज डर्मेटोलॉजी बाय डॉक्टर अवनीश एंड द लिंक टू दैट ग्रुप इज डर्मेटोलॉजी अंडरस्कोर फॉर अंडरस्कोर नीट पीजी माय रेफरल कोड ऑन अन एकेडमी प्लेटफॉर्म इट इज टेन डर्मा एंड फॉर यूट्यूब सेशन इट इज डी आर ए वी एन आई एस एच हाई फन वाई डी सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द फ्यू अनाउंसमेंट सो अन अकेडमी हैज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड आइकॉनिक सब्सक्रिप्शन सो दिस इज अ सब्सक्रिप्शन ऑफ in this subscription you will get the best of an academy in the form of live classes batch courses and the and the live test and quizzes and the best of prep ladder in the form of video lectures question bank and rapid revision courses regarding the subscription charges if you choose for a year subscription the iconic subscription will cost you 49500 rupees and it includes 10% of the discount and to avail that discount you can use the code dr avnish hyphen yt as mentioned in the slide and for the plus subscription a year subscri subscription will cost you 24750 rupees and it is again inclusive of 10% discount and to avail that discount you can again use the same code then also on an academy it's going on a daily t20 series for neat pg 2022 it is at 9 pm every day so you will be asked 20 mcqs of various branches so you can join the herd of really motivated people and see your performance and for neat pg 2021 it is at 8 pm every day so my upcoming classes in january both as free special classes on an academy platform and youtube session so they will be multiple choice questions or clinical scenarios in sexually transmitted diseases and leprosy so i'll be discussing the image based mcqs in dermatology as examinations are on computer nowadays i'll be discussing the mcqs of inicet which held in november 22 2020 i'll be discussing the mcqs of fmg both december and august 2020 and i'll be doing the pyqs of neat pg of last 3 years so now coming to the topic of today's class the mcqs on sexually transmitted diseases so this will give you an idea or it will be a revision session for those who are preparing for neat pg 2021 and this is your first question so it speaks about the organism which does not cause urethritis in male so the organism which is not associated with urethritis in male it is haemophilus ducreae which is associated with chancroid and it is also called as soft chancre and it is associated with the genital ulcerative disease so it is associated with genital ulcers and not with urethritis rest all the conditions the trichomonas vaginalis it can be associated with non gonococcal urethritis neisseria gonorrhea it is an important cause for gonococcal urethritis and chlamydia trachomatis that is also associated with non gonococcal urethritis so the correct answer is haemophilus ducreae which is associated with the genital ulcer disease and not with chancroid so a is the correct answer it does not cause urethritis in males so let us discuss the various causes of non gonococcal urethritis so the non gonococcal urethritis it is common in western world but nowadays the incidence is increasing in india the various causes of non gonococcal urethritis the important one being the chlamydia trachomatis apart from it it can be caused by mycoplasma trichomonas vaginalis candida adenovirus and even herpes simplex viral infection can lead to non gonococcal urethritis 
So these are few important causes of non-gonococcal urethritis. Then incubation period of non-gonococcal urethritis, it is one week to six weeks. Remember, for gonococcal urethritis, it is one day to five days, but non-gonococcal urethritis, it is one week to six weeks. Then the non-gonococcal urethritis can affect the squamous epithelia in addition to the columnar epithelia. So it can affect both the squamous and columnar epithelia, while gonococcal urethritis will affect only the columnar epithelia. It will never affect the stratified squamous epithelia. So this is about the non-gonococcal urethritis, how you can diagnose non-gonococcal urethritis. So non-gonococcal urethritis, you should look for greater than five pus cells per oil immersion field. But these pus cells, they do not contain gram-negative diplococci. So this clinches the diagnosis. If you do a smear examination from the urethral discharge, you will see the greater than five pus cells per oil immersion field but there will be negativity of gram-negative diplococci. The second, the positive leukocyte asterisk test in the first void sample can be seen. And when it is the infection is caused by chlamydia, it can be diagnosed by nucleic acid amplification test in the urine samples. So these are the three important tests which you can do for the diagnosis of non-gonococcal urethritis. And remember, in syndromic management, you have to treat the both the urethritis together. So the treatment is called as dual therapy as you are treating both the urethritis. So let it be a patient of gonococcal urethritis. You have to treat the non-gonococcal urethritis in addition to the gonococcal urethritis. Then the major differences between the gonococcal and non-gonococcal urethritis, the first one being the incubation period. So incubation period of gonococcal urethritis, it is one day to five days, while for non-gonococcal urethritis, it is one week to five weeks. The second one is the symptoms which are more severe in gonococcal urethritis. It is less severe in non-gonococcal urethritis. The discharge is profuse, purulent and greenish yellow in gonococcal urethritis while it is mucoid or mucopurulent in non-gonococcal urethritis. Sensations, there will be intense burning sensation in gonococcal urethritis while it will be a mild itchy feeling in the non-gonococcal urethritis. And regarding the epithelia, the gonococcal urethritis will affect the columnar epithelia cuboidal epithelia, but it will never affect the stratified squamous epithelia and non-gonococcal urethritis can affect the squamous epithelia in addition to the columnar and the cuboidal epithelia. So this is the difference between the discharge. So this is a mucoid discharge. You see non-gonococcal urethritis, but purulent discharge, it is characteristic of gonococcal urethritis. So if you make the smear, you will see a macrophage and within the macrophage, you will see that diplococci. So that clinches the diagnosis of gonococcal urethritis. So the presence of gram negative diplococci will take you to the gonococcal urethritis while the absence of gram negative diplococci will go in favor of non-gonococcal urethritis. So there will be pus cells, but there will be absence of diplococci in the smear examination of non-gonococcal urethritis. Question number two. So this question speaks about the clue cells. So anybody with the correct answer? Yes, I have got a correct answer from Ambika. So yes, the clue cells, they are vaginal epithelial cells. They are attached to infective microbe and they are seen in bacterial vaginosis. So yes, Amritesh, Rajat, all of you are correct. It is the cells seen in bacterial vaginosis and they are nothing 
but they are vaginal epithelial cells attached to infective microbe. So all of you are correct regarding the given question. They are vaginal epithelial cells seen in bacterial vaginosis. So bacterial vaginosis, it is a physiological change. It is not a pathological change. That is why the term used is vaginosis and not vaginitis. So it is a physiological change caused by Gardenella vaginalis. It could be by mycoplasma bacterioids and it is the most common cause of vaginal discharge. What happens? There will be decreased in the lactobacillus leading to the decreased production of hydrogen peroxide and increased Gardenella. So when Gardenella concentration is increased, there will be particular characteristic of the discharge. The discharge will be gray in color it will be homogeneous, it will be adherent to the vaginal walls, it will be emit a foul odor and it is non-pruritic. So these are five characteristic, the gray discharge, homogeneous discharge, attached to vaginal walls, which is uh, odoriferous discharge and non-pruritic discharge in bacterial vaginosis. Then Bacterial vaginosis you can diagnose by the clue cells which are vaginal epithelial cells which are attached to the infective microbes and you have a M cells criteria for the diagnosis. So if there are four limbs of the M cells criteria and you should have at least three out of these four criteria to be positive. The first criteria says their discharge should be homogeneous. So the presence of homogeneous vaginal discharge pH should be greater than 4.5. So pH greater than 4.5 is a feature of bacterial vaginosis. You can see them in trichomonas vaginalis vaginitis and pH less than 4.5 you see in candidal vaginitis. Then the third criteria is positive whip test that is when you take up amount of discharge you add potassium hydroxide, there will be liberation of fishy odor. And the fourth criteria, there should be a concentration of greater than 20% clue cells. So these are the four criteria, which are called as the M cells criteria for the diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis. And three out of four should be present for the diagnosis. Then this is the discharge, the gray discharge, homogeneous discharge attached to vaginal wall. It is a odoriferous discharge and non-pruritic discharge. So this is the discharge of bacterial vaginosis and these are the clue cells which are which are vaginal epithelial cells attached to infective microbes. Question number three. Yes, good evening, Achan Khan. Please try answering the question. So regarding the given question, I have got a correct answer from Rajat. He says that these lesions are pearly penile papules and he is absolutely right. So Ambika, you are also right. So both of you are absolutely right. These are pearly penile papules. So these are physiological changes. You see them over the coronal sulcus and they are seen in the sexually active males. So these are physiological change you can see in sexually active males males. So these are the angiofibromas. These are the angiofibromas. They can be in a single row and they can be in multiple rows and they may, may they are so they are helpful for giving the feeling of pleasure during sexual intercourse. So yes, the correct answer is the pearly penal papules. So these are acral angiofibromas seen around the coronal sulcus. They may happen in one row or multiple rows. They are smooth, flesh-colored papular lesions and they contribute to sexual pleasure and quicker orgasms during intercourse. So they are seen in sexually active males and these are pearly penile papules. 
so few more announcements so you can download the unacademy learning app from your play store you can choose your goal as need pg then you can choose for the type of subscription you want either it can be plus or iconic subscription you can then choose for the amount of the period for which you want the subscription and to get the 10% of discount you can use the code dravnish-yt then you can unlock the unacademy free plan to join the free classes on unacademy plus platform you can use the referral code 10dharma to join the free classes on unacademy platform question number 4 So I got the correct answer from Ambika. You are absolutely correct. So candidal vaginitis, it includes everything. The partner treatment is required. Vaginal discharge PS is less than 4.5. It is associated with intense pruritus, but WIP test, it is not a feature of candidal vaginitis. So yes, Rajat, you are also correct for the given question. WIP test, you see the positive WIP test. It is a feature of bacterial vaginosis. You can see them. In trichomonas vaginalis also, vaginalis vaginitis also, but it is not seen in candidal vaginitis. So answer is the choice B, positive WIF test, which is not a feature of candidal vaginitis. So candidal vaginitis, it is caused by candida albicans or else candida glabrata or candida tropicalis. The discharge here, it is associated with intense pruritus. It is cardioid discharge, the cottage cheese appearance of discharge. The patient may feel dysuria and dyspareunia. pH, vaginal pH will be less than 4.5 and the WIF test will be negative. So you can diagnose by the culture on sabrod sagar and treatment is with antifungals. And remember, partner treatment is also required. You have to treat the male partners in addition to the female partners with the antifungal drugs. So partner treatment is required for the candidal vaginitis. It is required for trichomonas vaginalis vaginitis, but partner treatment, it is not required for bacterial vaginosis. So there is no need to treat the partners in bacterial vaginosis. So this is candidal vaginitis. The images may show you the curdy white appearance of discharge, the cottage cheese appearance of discharge and the WIF test will be negative in candidal vaginitis. Question number five. So this is about incubation period of LGV. And yes, Ambika, once again, you are absolutely right. LGV, the incubation period is three days to 10 days. So this is the incubation period of LGV. So remember, LGV and Schenkroid, both of the conditions, they are associated with bubos, with the bubos formation or the lymph node enlargement. And both of them, they have got the same incubation period of three days to 10 days. Then syphilis and donovanosis. So both of them, they are associated with painless ulcers and they share the same incubation period of nine days to 90 days. Then gonococcal urethritis it has got the incubation period of one day to five day 
and non gonococcal urethritis it is one week to five weeks rest is herpes herpes simplex virus infection it is two days to seven days so these are various incubation period of sexually transmitted diseases lgv shares the same incubation period as chancroid which is three days to ten days so the incubation period of lgv it is three days to ten days if you expand lgv it is called as lympho granuloma venereum so what it means it is a venereal disease which is which is which affects the lymphatics and it is a granulomatous disease so it is a granulomatous disease which affects the lymphatics so mainly it affects the lymphatics so the granuloma venereum lympho granuloma venereum it is also called as the tropical bubo climatic bubo or durand febre nicolas disease according to the name of scientist who discovered it caused by chlamydia trachomatis serovars l1 l2 l3 then incubation period now you know it is 3 days to 10 days now the lympho granuloma venereum it affects the columnar epithelia of the lymphatics so it causes the lymphangitis and lymphadenitis so there will be thrombolymphangitis perilymphangitis the lymph nodes associated will become enlarged and necrotic they develop the stellate abscesses and these lymph nodes heals by fibrosis so once the lymphatics they are damaged the end organ will be enlarged so there will be elephantiasis of the associated genitalia so mainly it is the lymphogranuloma venereum it is a disorder of lymphatics now it has got three stages the pri the primary stage which is which is associated with the painless ulcer and the ulcer is very transient it comes and goes very fast so in the primary stage of lgv you can get an ulcer but usually that is missed by the time patient present to the doctor he will be in secondary stage and secondary stage is associated with painful lymph node enlargement so there will be a painless ulcer but painful lymph node enlargement in lgv so lymph nodes can be of inguinal area and femoral areas and thereafter there will be a tertiary stage of lgv wherein you will see the complication due to the fibrosis of the lymph node so there will be lymphedema and genital elephantiasis so these are the three stages of lgv so the primary stage you can get a, which is a transient stage you can get a painless ulcer which can be seen in males and in females the ulcer disappears soon without leaving any scar so you can get a ulcer in the primary stage of lgv thereafter this is the ulceration in females and the same ulcerations the small superficial fleeting ulcers which are painless can be seen in males so both of them they can have the ulceration so you can get a painless ulcer but painful lymph nodes in lgv then thereafter comes a secondary stage which is associated with lymph node enlargement so lymph node enlargement they are slightly painful they can be bilateral and they have multiple sinuses so the lymph nodes they have multiple cavities they rupture to form multiple sinuses so the lymph node enlargement they are called as bubos they are slightly painful they can be bilateral they rupture to form multiple sinuses and you can get a groove sign of green blood which is the enlargement of the inguinal and femoral group of lymph nodes on two side of inguinal ligament so remember groove sign of green blood it is a feature of lgv but can be seen to a lesser extent in chancroid also so you can get the groove sign of green blood in chancroid also so this is the groove sign of green blood the in the enlargement of the inguinal ligament inguinal lymph nodes and femoral group of lymph nodes and it can be bilateral in lgv then the third stage is the stage of complications so the if the infection it is there on the rectum so it may lead to the rectal strictures that can be annular tubular or funnel shaped strictures in males the complication can be the ramrod penis which is the solidification of penis and saxophone penis apart from solidification there will be twisting of penis 
and in females the complications they are called as astumin which is characterized by the chronic edema and swelling of genitalia due to that due to the damage to the lymphatic system so in females it is called as the astumin formation so the first image is of the genitalia enlargement in females called as astumin and second image it is of saxophone penis so these are the complications of lgb finally a word about the buboes which are lymph node enlargement so you can get the buboes in lgb you can get them in chancroid in lgb by the time patient presents with the lymph node enlargement ulcers may not be present but in chancroids ulcer are usually present with the lymph node enlargement the lgb lymph nodes they are less painful while chancroid lymph nodes they are more painful lgb lymph nodes can be bilateral in one third of the patients but the chancroidal lymph nodes they are strictly unilateral groove sign is a feature of lgb but can be present in chancroid as well so lgb lymph nodes they are unilock they are multilocular they open with multiple sinuses while chancroidal lymph nodes they are unilocular and they rupture to form single sinus so this is the difference between the buboes or lymph node enlargement of lgb and chancroid question number 6 So yes, Rajat and Kirti, both of you are correct. The correct answer is the ben injection benzathione penicillin, 7.2 million units in three doses. So you give 2.4 million units of benzathione penicillin every week. So that will become 2.4 plus 2.4 plus 2.4. So that will become 7.2 million units in three doses. So this is for the cardiovascular syphilis. So let us know the treatment of syphilis with penicillin. So the answer is the choice C. So the treatment of syphilis with penicillin when the patients present with the primary stage of the syphilis in the secondary stage of the syphilis, early latent and relapsing syphilis. So herein you can treat the patient with injection benzathione penicillin 2.4 million units intramuscularly, deep intramuscularly, single dose, but after a test dose. If you do not have benzathine penicillin, you can treat the patient with procaine penicillin, 1.2 international million units intramuscularly for 10 days. When the patients present in the late stage, that is in the cardiovascular syphilis, neurosyphilis and so on, so you can treat with injection benzathine penicillin 2.4 million units IM but here the treatment has to be given each week for 3 weeks. So there will be uh, addition of the treatment for 3 weeks 2.4 plus 2.4 plus 2.4 that will become 7.2 million units and procaine penicillin can be given for 20 days. So this is when the patient present in the late stages of the syphilis mainly in the tertiary syphilis and cardiovascular syphilis. What is the treatment if the patient present with the neurosyphilis? So you have to give injection crystalline penicillin because it can penetrate the blood brain barrier. So you can, the dose is three to four million units intravenously, fourth hourly for 10 to 14 days. And for congenital syphilis, again, the treatment is with crystalline penicillin, 50,000, 50,000 units per kg intravenously for 10 days. So this is the treatment of syphilis with penicillin. Now, Unacademy has started various batches. So few of them has already been started, like few, like the one on 4th of Jan, it has been started, and the one on 7th Jan, it has been started. So morning batches and evening batches are there. You can join in these batches, and uh, you can join the batches, and you see your performance. So you can prepare for your future examination. 
So the one batch has been started on 7 January, that is today. It has been started as a morning batch and a batch has been started on 7 January again at an evening batch. So according to your convenience, you can join in these batches. Question number 7. So the correct answer for the given question, so the patient had fever, maculopapular rash, headache and myalgia and it started 12 afters after taking the intramuscular injection. So yes, Rajat, you are absolutely right. It is the jarish hexima reaction. So jarish hexima reaction, it is a reaction due to penicillin it is also called as a paradoxical reaction because you have initiated the treatment with penicillin and at the same time the symptoms they are increasing. So that is why it is called as the paradoxical reaction because it starts after it starts usually start after taking the intramuscular treatment with penicillin and this is due to the liberation of toxins from killed treponemes. So usually the treponema pallidum which are killed that leads to the, the, the toxins which are re released it leads to the jarish hexima reaction. So yes the answer is the jarish hexima reaction. So when you treat the patient with penicillin the patients can either have the anaphylaxis for which you give the test dose. The patient can have the jarish hexima reaction and the patients can have the Huygens syndrome as the sequelae of the treatment with penicillin. So jarish hexima reaction, it is a paradoxical reaction because there will be aggravation of symptoms on treatment. At the one time you are giving the treatment, at the same time symptoms they are increasing. So usually it starts within 12 hours of the first dose. It is due to hypersensitivity to kill treponins or due to their liberated toxins. Patient may have flu-like symptom and rash. When it happens in secondary of early syphilis, that is up to secondary syphilis, it is harmless, can be treated with bed rest and NSAIDs. But when it happens in the late syphilis, that is in the tertiary syphilis, cardiovascular syphilis, though it is uncommon, but it is potentially dangerous, it can lead to mortality and morbidity. And therein, you have to treat the patients with steroids. So this is jarish hexima reaction, which is due to liberation of toxins by killed treponins. Then a word about the Huygens syndrome. So it is a rare syndrome. It, there are only nine case reports of this syndrome and it happens due to the vascular occlusion by the large crystals of penicillin salts. So it is the development of acute psychotic symptoms after the injection of procaine penicillin or benzathine penicillin. It is also called as the pseudo anaphylactic or pseudo allergic reaction and this, this is due to the vascular occlusion. It lasts for less than 20 minutes but in that 20 minutes patient may present with mental confusion, visual and auditory hallucinations, perceived change in the body shape, swelling of tongue and fear of impending death. So it mainly they are the development of acute psychotic symptoms which last less than 20 minutes and this is due to vascular occlusion by the large salts of penicillin. Question number 8.
so please don't forget the term except so the painless genital ulcers painless ulcers you get in lgv so lgv it is caused by chlamydia you can get it in donovanosis which is caused by klebsiella granulomatis and you can get it in syphilis which is caused by treponema pallidum so you are left only with hemophilus ducre which causes chancroid and it leads to painful genital ulcers so painful genital ulcers you see in chancroid and you see it in genital herpes so that is why the answer is choice c the chancroid the hemophilus ducre which is associated with chancroid which rather causes the painful ulcers and in question rest of the three choices the they are associated with painless ulcer so yes the answer is the choice c the hemophilus ducre which is associated with painful genital ulcers so this was all which i had to present in today's class i finally urge you to attend more free live classes plus courses and batch courses you can use the referral code dravnish-yt to get 10% off you can follow us on youtube you can follow us on telegram and i personally will be very happy to answer your queries if there are any and i finally say thank you very much for your patient listening it was nice interacting with you all have a pleasant evening thank you